everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. If you've never been here before, have no idea what I do here on my channel, I cover true crime cases and pretty much all the cases that I cover are a little bit older. They're all basically 20 years or older. So if that's something that you might be interested in, maybe go down below, click that subscribe button and also make sure to turn on the post notifications to be notified every time that I upload. And if you are new here, you are probably not aware that I've been gone for about two weeks from my channel and I've missed you all dearly. I'm not going to go into a whole description of what has been going on in my life, but I did kind of post a little bit in the community tab to just keep you all updated, but just a lot has been going on and I know a lot has been going on in everybody's lives, but I just wasn't in the right headspace to sit down and film, but I am back and I have a lot of videos planned for December. And if you're unaware, December on my channel is always December, meaning that I cover Jane and John Doe cases for the entire month. If you know a lot about Jane and John Doe cases, or if it's something that you look into, you may be aware that a lot of Jane and John Doe's have been identified recently. Unfortunately though, the case that I am discussing today, this Doe is still unidentified. And to be honest, this is one of the doe cases that has been most requested for me to do on my channel. And I have put this one off for a while for one main reason, and that is that it is very gruesome. It is very hard to talk about. And obviously talking about gruesome circumstances is what I do on my channel, but this one just, it's a lot. Other than it being so heartbreaking and gruesome, it involves a child. And I know that it has been so requested, so I decided to finally sit down and discuss this case. And the first time I had heard about this case was actually from Kaylee Elise. She had covered this case and I feel like she did a very respectful job of doing so. So I hope I am able to do it kind of in the same manner. But with all of that being said, let's get right into it. The first December video of this month. This is the case of St. Louis Jane Doe, or also referred to as Hope Jane Doe, or just Hope in general, or Little Jane Doe. On the day of February 28th of the year 1983, two men trespassed on the property of an abandoned home that stood at 5635 Clemens Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri. Their goal was to enter the home that no one resided at and look around for any scrap metal that they could find laying around. According to them, they wanted the scrap metal for their car. What they found though was something they never expected. It was the afternoon when they decided to do this searching, but even with the light outside, the home was pretty much completely dark. And of course, because no one was living in the home, there was no power on in it as well, but especially no light on in the home in the area of the home where they were looking, which was the furnace room of the basement. During their searching, they stopped. A cigarette break was apparently needed. One of them lights a cigarette and the light from that lighter lit up that surrounding area a little and they spot something next to them. It was the body of a girl and authorities were contacted pretty much immediately. Now, it was the way that this poor girl was left that made this case so heartbreaking and was the reason it attracted so much media attention at the time. Now, the body belonged to a black female and she was lying on her stomach with her hands bound behind her back with a white and red nylon rope. She was naked except for a yellow long sleeved V-neck sweater. And worst of all, she had been decapitated and her head was nowhere to be found. When authorities first saw her body, it was two detectives, Joe Burgoon and Herb Riley, who first showed up. They thought that this body may have belonged to a full grown woman. They thought originally that this unknown woman may have been a sex worker who possibly was killed after meeting up with the wrong client. They were wrong though, because after examining her body, this girl's breasts had not fully developed. So she had not gone through puberty yet. Instead of her being a grown woman, like they initially guessed, this was the body of a young girl. A young girl who they ultimately discovered had been raped 
strangled and had her head cut off very cleanly by a large knife after her death. They believed her cause of death though was strangulation. Now, of course they examined the scene around the body and there was no blood really anywhere. All the blood was on the body itself, which led authorities to believe that this unknown girl, their Jane Doe, had been killed at another location and then brought to this abandoned home and left there. They guessed that she was most likely between the ages of eight to 11 years old, and she stood anywhere between four feet, 10 inches tall and five feet, six inches tall while she was alive. She had no major signs of any deformities, the only thing they noticed was that she did have evidence of spina bifida occulta. Spina bifida is a birth defect in which there is incomplete closing of the spine and the membranes around the spinal cord during early development in pregnancy and occulta is the mildest form of this with mild to no signs of it. Most people with it don't even know that they have it. There also surprisingly was no signs of prior abuse to the body, meaning it didn't seem like she had been abused physically during her life. Another thing about her is she did have on two layers of red nail polish on her nails. It seemed like during her life she had been well taken care of, no signs of physical abuse, she wasn't malnourished and seemed like she had good hygiene. Her stomach though was pretty much completely empty. It had been a while since she had eaten when her life was taken and they did determine that she had most likely been killed about five days before her remains were found. They had no idea where this young girl who they named St. Louis Jane Doe had come from or who she was, but they truly tried hard to find the answers to those questions. They tried to spread the word of this Jane Doe the best that they could. They ran dozens of ads in newspapers and magazines, but none of the tips that came in got them anywhere. And 10 months after hitting dead end after dead end in her case, they decided that it was finally time to bury this girl. On December 2nd of 1983, they buried her in Washington Park Cemetery located in Berkeley, Missouri, a suburb of St. Louis. Now St. Louis, there was obviously a little bit of crime going on there. It is a more populated area, but they had never seen anything like this. And I, I would say that most areas in the United States were not used to crimes that were this horrific. Now this was 1983. This was a time before DNA testing. They couldn't even use that. They did of course have her fingerprints. That didn't go anywhere. They didn't have her dental records of course because she didn't have her head. And they went around to a lot of schools in the area to try to see if there was possibly somebody missing from school, maybe some child that this little girl could be, but nothing nothing was coming of it. They definitely didn't think that she was from the St. Louis area because of this. And the hardest thing about trying to identify her was the fact that she did not have her head, which of course includes your face, which is the thing that most people are able to identify you from. And because of how spine chilling this case was, it did grab a lot of people's attention and media was kind of going crazy at this time in this area. And it affected the community like many cases do where kids were not allowed to stay out that late, people were locking their doors at night, that sort of thing. They didn't know if the person who had done this or people who had done this had just targeted this little girl or possibly they were going to strike again and that her life was just taken at random. As time went on and they really were not getting anywhere with this case, they decided to do what a lot of departments decide to do when they're kind of out of options, go to psychics. One supposed psychic that they spoke to told them that they couldn't really pick up much about the case, but they stated that the young girl's head was on a boat that was sailing at the time in the Gulf of Mexico. They ended up speaking to another supposed psychic and this psychic stated that the young girl was named Shannon Johnson and that her killer was then living in a Southern area in Texas. They also ended up speaking to another supposed psychic and this was the most unfortunate incident of them all because this woman who was located in Florida 
told authorities that she wanted the sweater and nylon rope so she could hold them and see if she picked up anything from them. Well, authorities sent these items over and apparently they got lost in the mail, never to be seen again. So these two very important items in a cold case are just floating around out there somewhere and nobody knows what happened to them. Now, in the end, none of these psychics gave them any information that was helpful to the case in any way. It got them nowhere and was basically a complete waste of time and ended in them losing the girl's sweater and the rope used to tie her up. It's beyond unfortunate. And honestly, that part just seems very fishy to me. Since the beginning of the case of St. Louis Jane Doe, there have been quite a few girls that have been ruled out as possibly being her. Now, we do not know who she was. We don't know that. There's a lot of theories about who she may have been, but there is a huge theory in this case of who may have been responsible. It is widely discussed that she may have been a victim of serial killer Vernon Brown. Vernon Brown was a serial killer that targeted young women and girls around the Indiana and Missouri area from 1980 to 1986. He was arrested on October 27th of 1986. The exact number of his victims is still unknown. The thing about St. Louis Jane Doe and Vernon Brown is she does fit the description of the type of girl he would have targeted. And he did like to strangle his victims, but he never admitted to authorities that he ever had any involvement in her murder. And he was ultimately sentenced to death and executed by lethal injection on May 17th of the year 2005. There is no solid evidence to tie him to the murder of St. Louis Jane Doe, but it is a theory lean towards, in this case, by many. Through the years, they really have done everything they can think of to try to identify this girl. In the year 2009, that's when they decided to exhume her remains and start up some more testing. When they tried to exhume her body though, they actually could not locate it. Three bodies were where they thought she was and none of them were her. So they basically were digging up in the cemetery came across a body, wasn't hers, came across another one, wasn't hers, came across another one, wasn't hers. I'm not gonna speak for the Washington Park Cemetery, but I guess they just didn't do a grand job at keeping records of exactly where all the bodies were located. But in March of 2013, they decided to try to find her again with more help. And eventually they finally located her in June of that year. And strangely, the only way they found her remains was by looking at the photo from her burial and trying to pinpoint exactly where in the cemetery she was buried. They did end up doing isotope testing to see what areas she may have been in during her life. Information on this differs based on the source though. According to an article by the St. Louis Post Dispatch, the girl may have spent her life in one of the following states, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, or South Carolina. Now, all of these states are in the southeastern corner of the United States. But according to the entry on the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, they concluded through testing a completely different answer. Their testing more leaned towards her being from Midwestern and mid-Atlantic states such as Pennsylvania, Indiana, West Virginia, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a five foot one blonde girl on YouTube who researches into these cases, but when it comes to cold cases, professionals sometimes butt heads when it comes to isotope testing. Some think it is a great way of discovering the location where a person possibly came from when it comes to Jane and John Doe cases and that it may help solve the mystery of who that individual was. There are some professionals though who don't believe it should be something to depend on because the results can be literally all over the place. Just for me, non-scientist Gabby, researching these cases, I have seen many cases where isotope testing has said that an individual was from a certain area and then they actually found out who that individual was and they were from a completely different area. I have seen many cases where say, isotope testing said that the individual may have come from like the East Coast and then they actually find out 
who they were and this person actually came from the west coast that's just an example now don't get me wrong i think that isotope testing is a fabulous advancement in technology i just think it's something that will get more accurate within time after more trial and error that's just my opinion though and i've seen some experts pretty much say the same thing as well all in all though they are very all over the place with where this girl may have come from but they just they don't really believe that she was a local to the St. Louis area. They think that she was from elsewhere, not just because of isotope testing, but because no one really came forward claiming the girl, claiming that they knew her and she hasn't matched any of the missing girls in that area. It isn't impossible that she was from the St. Louis area, but it's not something that they really count on. According to the St. Louis Post Dispatch, where I got a bit of my information from. They do not believe that St. Louis Jane Doe was from that area, but they do believe that her killer possibly knew that area very, very well. When they had exhumed her body, they did a bunch of testing and they collected as much from her remains as they could when it comes to like DNA and everything. And they actually ended up laying her back to rest in a completely different cemetery. They decided to bury her remains in Calvary Cemetery, which is a Roman Catholic cemetery in St. Louis, and they put her in an area known as the Garden of Innocence, and this section is for unidentified individuals just like St. Louis Jane Doe. Her grave currently reads, the saddened hearts were healed in knowing the pain of life is over and the beauty of the soul revealed. Based on an article from Fox 2 Now that was posted last year in 2020, the head of the St. Louis Metro Homicide Division believes someone out there knows something. He told Fox 2, an eight, nine, 10, or 11 year old girl doesn't go missing without people taking notice. We are now 37 years later, and I think if anyone was reluctant before to talk, now is the time to come forward. If anyone knows a little girl, maybe a family member who they suddenly lost track of and disappeared, we want to know. We are interested in anything. He also stated that they have not received any good tips in 10 to 15 years, but they do in today's time actually have an entire room at the St. Louis Cold Case Unit devoted to this little girl which I find absolutely amazing and it really shows how much they care. But they beg people if anyone has any information at all about this case, any information about who this girl may have been in life, any information about who may have done this to her to please contact the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department's Homicide Unit at 314-444-5371. And remember, as always, you can stay anonymous. This case, of Hope Doe, Little Doe, St. Louis Jane Doe is currently 38 years old, almost four decades old. If she was alive today, they think that she would be anywhere between 46 to 49 years old because they do believe that she was born somewhere between 1972 to 1975. Still to this day, they have never located this girl's head and they believe that it was discarded somewhere to further prevent her identification. It is truly sad because in Jane and John Doe cases, of course, there is usually a reconstruction photo done of the individual, but in this case, there's no reconstruction photo done because they do not know what her face looked like. This case is seriously the definition of completely devastating. Not only do they not know where her head is, but with everything that happened with the psychic in Florida, they don't even have her sweater anymore. The only item of clothing that was really on her when her body was found. And they also don't have the rope that was used to tie her hands behind her back. Who knows what DNA they could have found, not from just the sweater, but the rope. I mean, whoever did this to her tied her up. They could have found eventually DNA from that rope and they don't even have it. There are just so many factors in this case that are completely working against this girl's identity being solved, but I hope, especially with genetic genealogy and DNA testing, that she can finally 
have her name back. I do want to say that I did all of the research for this video back in August before I started Salt September and Old Days October and No Trace November. So I had this research done in August and before I did this video, I did want to look up if there were any updates in this case because, you know, updates are coming all the time in these cases. And apparently they just released a documentary about this case called Our Precious Hope. And it has people directly involved in the case that worked on this documentary. So I will have any information about that documentary linked down below in the description as well as all of my sources. This little girl, this unknown little girl, her nickname is Hope and I truly think that that is the most appropriate name for her because that is the one thing that you really have to have in this case. So that was the first Doe case I decided to cover in this month's December and I have many more planned like I said before but I do want to say that I've been getting so many requests to cover different Jane and John Doe cases of people who have very recently been identified and I do not think that I will be covering any of those. I'm talking like within the last like month or two because it is still very, very fresh and I do not want to add any more attention to the case while the family is still grieving. For instance, one of the cases that was seriously like one of my pet cases was Walker County Jane Doe and she was recently identified and I seriously woke up and cried when I saw a picture of her because I had been so heavily just mentally obsessed with that case for so many years and I just, I cried. Also Woodlawn County Jane Doe, she was recently identified. Um, Septic Tank Sam, recently identified. So many people have been recently identified. Aurora County Jane Doe was just recently identified, literally like within the past like day or two they announced it. I'm blown away, but I don't think I'm going to be covering any of those cases right now. But thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch today's video and learn about today's case, and I will see you in the next December video. Bye, guys.